All right, so today we're going to try and do something actually very similar to something we did in um, the Digital Hourglass uh, project. Uh, we want to send our sonar info back to the computer so it prints out to the serial monitor, but if we just get it, it to do it every pass through the loop, it'll just spam us too much, uh, especially if we're trying communication both ways. It's not very efficient. So really, I only want it updated about every half second or so. Uh, it can tell me how many centimeters it is to the nearest object. Uh, so we need a timer for that. So we're going to use the same trick from uh, Digital Hourglass and a few of the others. So we're going to have an unsigned long called previous time. Uh, we're going to have an interval, which holds how many milliseconds we want in between transmissions. And uh, if it's been uh, the interval, so in our case, like 500 milliseconds between the current time and the previous time, uh, we reset our counter. We've set our previous time to the current time. Uh, so uh, it'll be another interval before this becomes true again. Uh, another 500 milliseconds. And then we do our thing. We send our sonar info to the computer. So uh, if you need help on this, uh, watch this video, of course, and also check out Digital Hourglass, because same logic. So let's go to our template. So uh, create just like the uh, Digital Hourglass, we'll create an unsigned long, because we will be using the millis command, and that's what it gives us. Uh, remember, unsigned means it can only be positive, and it's an unsigned long, and a long is just a bigger integer. Uh, it's an unsigned long because that gives us uh, a lot of numbers. If we're counting milliseconds constantly, it'll take about a month before we roll over and go back to zero if we get an integer overflow error. Yes, time equals zero. And then we do the same thing with current time uh, for our long or unsigned long called interval. Um, I might make it unsigned. Not that I need the extra space, because my interval is 500, but whatever. I really could make it an int, but anyway. Uh, interval, so the amount of time in between sending our transmissions. So if you want to update every tenth of a second, put in 100 milliseconds, because 100 milliseconds is a tenth of a second. In my case, I just want them every half second, so I'll put in 500 because 500 milliseconds is half a second. Uh, we've got this fake sonar method here, uh, just because why create a whole new one? We'll merge this with our other program. And then we got nothing to do in setup. I put in a serial.begin. And then uh, we want to set our current time to how many milliseconds it's been since the Arduino is turned on a reset. If you remember, uh, we use the millis command for that. So current time equals millis. And then we do exactly what we did in Digital Hourglass. If it has been greater than our interval, greater than our 500 milliseconds since we last sent a transmission, uh, we do that just with subtraction. We take our current time and find the difference between that and the previous time which will either be when we last, uh, when we turn the Arduino on, we want to wait 500 milliseconds, or it'll be uh, since we last uh, sent a transmission. So if that is greater than our interval, so exactly like our digital hourglass, uh, we want to print the sonar value to the computer. So you know how to print. We can do this all in one line. You could do it in two with an extra variable if you wanted, but why? Because uh, sonar will just be equal to uh, the distance uh, to the computer. So we can just put it in and that should work just fine. And then we also want to uh, reset our timer. So we just set our previous time to current time. If I can spell it. Let's 
So what this does is it means it'll be another interval before this becomes true again. Because if you think about it, the next pass through the loop, it's been, say, 2 milliseconds. Uh, and so current time minus previous time will be like 2 milliseconds, and that's totally not greater than the 500 we want to wait. So we got to wait another 500 milliseconds. This is resetting our counter. And then we're done. Uh, so that's all we need. It's really not too bad. Uh, but now we want to merge it with our program so we can go back to our motor test or whatever you've called it at this point. Uh, and basically just cut and paste junk in. Uh, so this is the stuff that needs to go before our methods, our previous time, our current time, which I didn't do, and our interval. So we'd copy and paste that. We'd go over to our motor test and then just throw it somewhere up top. And then, by the way, we might want to clean this up so it looks a little neater and you can read it and there's some organization to it. But uh, for now, so you get the gist and so I don't make this video too long, I will just throw it in there. Uh, setup, you already have a serial.begin from last time when we were controlling it. So we don't need that. And everything in our loop, we will throw in. And then if we go back to motor test, um, if we go back here, here's all our uh, controlling code. And so every loop we see if we need to change what direction it's moving or stop it or whatever. Uh, and every pass through the loop, we will also double check to see if it's been 500 milliseconds or whatever you decide you think is a good update time. Uh, and so we should send our sonar values back to the computer. And now you should have a fully functional uh, remote control program that you can control from the serial monitor. Now, if only we didn't have any wires. Hmm.